Hey everyone, this is Howie, and I'm giving you an update on Duke Transform. Here we are in our space in the bullpen, and I want to talk to you about, uh, you know, the transformative um, uh, kind of elements that we're thinking about. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. So transform, the, the DNA for transform is about a transformative experience, and uh, it's... The, the bar that we've set is it's so good that you want to come back each year. So um, there are these five ways that we are thinking about um, transformation. Uh, so the first is personal. Uh, the second is business and career. The third is society. And I think this is, this is your, your massive transformative purpose. The fourth is student. And the fifth is Duke. And uh, so let's get into it a little bit more as, as to what those, those mean here. So, uh, you know, with personal, um, you know, with respect to health, you know, do you have a, a physical or, or kind of mental health goal that you're aiming for, a community goal, a financial goal? You know, so examples could be like, I wanna, you know, I wanna run a marathon this year, uh, I wanna lose 10 pounds, um, you know, I wanna meditate every day, things like that. So that's the idea behind the personal transformation. The business transformation, you know, this is more about, uh, or career transformation, you know, this is more about like what's the next step for, for you, for, for what you're working on, whether it's launching a new product, gaining traction, raising capital, getting more sales, um, you know, having a higher net promoter score, things like that. So that's kind of the transformation there. You know, the massive transformative formative purpose, you know, society, you know, I think this is the whole idea about you know creating a debt in the universe, and you know there's so many topical areas right now that are, um, you know, increasing innovation at an, an exponential scale. Um, but you know, we as humans, we're not great at at thinking about exponential, so we think more linearly. So you know, the, the best way I've seen this diagrammed out is that you know, humans think linearly, but the innovation is happening at a exponential scale. So, you know, for some industries, I think we're, we're kind of right here, right? Like AI has proven that it is way better at humans at many, many things. And, um, you know, how do we, how do we, how do we adjust? How do we adjust and how do we, how do we deal with that? And what does the future hold? So kind of massive transformative, purpose. There's so many things going on in society that need help. AI is just one example. You know, uh, there's so many, you know, energy, robotics, virtual reality, education, voice apps, water, genetics, space, housing, food, safety, and conflict. I mean, th that's just a, you know, there's many, many more, right? Okay. So, um, student transformation. So, um, I would argue that I think that mentorship is, uh, uh, possibly the number one impact factor that um, that can happen for young people, uh, students, and you know I think that um, uh, there are some that agree with that. Uh, I read a article by Duke alum Brandon Bustide recently, which basically argued this. Um, uh, and so what, what I often see with students, and I I I very much connect. I'm very focused on connecting students to mentors as early as possible in their careers. Um, so what I, what I tend to do is I'll meet a student for 15 minutes and I'll just say, hey, let me start connecting you to people. Um, and and, and what I, the reason why I think that it's such a transformative effect is that if they connect with the right person, that might lead to their first job. It might lead to their kind of first funding of, of, a, of a startup. It might lead to... Um, uh, you know, mentorship, it, it might lead to kind of connections that, that they don't have access to. It might lead to insights about what they should do with their life. So um, our goal is that we very much intentionally want to have you be doing transformational uh, work with the students. Uh, so we'll talk more about that. And then the last thing here is transforming Duke. So, um, you know, Duke and, and higher ed in general is facing a ton of pressure. Uh, and um, how do we infuse innovative thinking um, into, into our work at Duke within um, our group at Duke Innovation and Entrepreneurship and, and all of the, the partner schools that we have across campus, including Fuqua, Trinity, Pratt, 
nursing, Sanford, Nicholas, uh, I'm going to forget some, grad school, law school, medical school, um, you know, and, and how, do we, how do we lead by example with the innovation that we're doing? How do we infuse it across campus, all these different schools, all these different student bodies, all these different alumni populations, all these different faculty and staff populations? But also, how do we prepare Duke for the, the um, you know, for the incoming uh, innovations and disruptions which are gonna change the landscape for higher ed. I mean, just a, a few examples here. Um, some of you are familiar with Lambda School, Minerva, and Y Combinator. I mean, you know, when I think about these models, um, I think like, wow, these, these people are taking really big bets and um, they're able to, you know, maneuver in the way that, that only startups can, which is that they can, you know, make uh, quick choices turn on a dime and, uh, you know, reallocate resources very quickly. Um, you should check these out. I won't go into too much detail, but uh, the basic de gist is Lambda School is a coding school where you, where you pay nothing unless you get a job that pays over $50,000. So, you know, imagine paying nothing to go to coding school and only paying if you're making, you know, a good career, uh, making money and a good, good coding career versus typical higher ed, you're paying, you know, I think uh, right now the tuition hike for Duke went up to, I think $70,000 recently. So $70,000 times four years, that's $280,000. And, um, you know, let's say you get a great CS education there, still like just the kind of the, the there's gotta be some element that looks at the financials and says like, wow, like Lambda School is an amazing deal. Minerva, this is a really different um, idea. Uh, it started in the Bay Area and it's an idea of intentionally building a, a school that from the ground up is um, not tied to kind of physical assets like a campus, but actually kind of connected by the, um, you know, the, the experience, you know, the city is the campus and starting in San Francisco and moving to other cities and connecting everybody, everything really well by technology and bringing in you know, the best educators. And you know, I think their, their acceptance rate right now is already, I think, as selective as the Ivy Leagues. I think it might be more selective. And then Y Combinator, you know, Paul Graham himself, he said, you know, Y Combinator is a form of higher ed. I'll have to look for the citation there, but, but I, remember, I remember reading him saying something like that. Uh, you know, and, and what's the value proposition? It's that, you know, we're super selective, right? More selective than Ivy League schools. We're, we're actually paying you money. We're, we're investing in your company to, to launch it. Um, I forget what the latest is. It's over $100,000. And, um, you know, it's kind of a, you know, we only succeed if you succeed. We have a great alumni network. I read a tweet recently, which is that, uh, you know, for accelerators, alumni is their moat, right? It's their defensive moat. And, you know, it, it, that's really interesting because for a lot of higher education institutions, alumni are, are their moats, right? So, so it's just kind of interesting to think about the, the disruptive models that are coming into higher ed. And then, you know, some of the challenges that we're facing. I mean, I read a story recently about um, some recent grads from another school who they had a million dollars in debt, uh, or he had a million dollars in debt. I think he had done college and dental school and maybe something else. Um, so debt is a huge burden and, you know, when it's matched with people that don't, that aren't well employed afterwards, that can be a real drag on kind of their, their quality of life. So that's a huge, huge challenge. And then uh, slow innovation, right? I mean, so, you know, for, for Y Combinator and the like, their, their ethos is, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, iteration speed is correlated to startup success. You know, it's... it's uh, you know, launch fast and, and iterate. And so, you know, innovation in the university is slower. Is that good or bad? You know, I don't know. Um, but it does, it does make me um, wonder how is the university going to respond when, you know, the curves are looking like this, right? I mean, if, if the curve for higher ed and how higher ed is... So let's talk about the event. So um, each of you is going to be matched with a talking partner and then each set of talking partners is going to be put into a team together and both of these matches are for an entire year uh, between now and the event there's going to be some prep work and then we're going to have the event and then uh throughout the year there's these kind of regular check-ins which act as the heartbeat for um you know keeping in touch tracking to all of your goals 
and then you're going to report out at the end and it's going to be next year's transform event so we you know we want this whole process to be great at uh, a lightweight way of keeping you know things accountable for you but also to to have you know intentional community to have support for your transformational goals um and then the other thing i want to say is kind of the agenda so still a little bit of a work in progress but um, i think we're we're pretty close to uh, all the elements both the the large rocks and the small rocks of what's going to happen so day one um that first evening uh you know it's all about you know breaking down the barriers here you know this is not your average this is not your average industry event uh we're we're talking about authentic authenticity vulnerability being fully present um and and you know finding your massive transformative purpose and if and and for many of you that's going to be you know the first time in a long time that you've been asked the question about like what is what's the purpose you're going for for some of you who have thought about you know your your kind of purpose in, in life that's great and 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 we would offer that this is a chance for you to to talk about that in a great community of like-minded individuals uh, who want to be supportive and, and help you with that and then day two is kind of a set of things you know talking partners uh teams meeting uh, breakout session one, two, and three. There's also this in the boardroom session, which is about um, kind of mentorship. There's a team debrief and then closing dinner and after party. And then day three is all about the, um, both the students. So you're gonna be matched with your students and together with your students, you're gonna um, you know, set their transformational goals and go on a Durham startup tour together. So it's like a progressive tour, uh, which will also give you exposure to some of the amazing transformation that's happened in downtown Durham while simultaneously giving you, um, you know, a chance to, to uh, get to know the students in a way that you, know, you both are kind of able to talk about things um, as well. So that's it, that's uh, Duke Transform, uh, you know, kind of a bunch of different lenses to look at Duke, at Duke Trans, Transform through, through to Duke Transform and uh, the calendar and uh, kind of the, uh, the, the daily schedule there.